Welcome to a, another edition of A's with Ashley. The last video I posted um, was going over section views and detail views, particularly for this steering wheel here. So I'm going to go ahead and model this in SolidWorks. Um, I'll leave the drawing here for a second, um, take a screenshot, take a picture, um, so I'm just going to leave it on my other screen since I went over everything more detailed in the last video. Um, so we're just going to model this and go from there. So I'm in SolidWorks. I'm going to start a new part. It's going to take its sweet time to load. There we go, okay. I still have no idea why everything is so large. It's just, I don't know, it's forever large. Um, I'm going to sketch my steering wheel. I'm gonna start my sketch in the right plane. And then because this is a revolve, I like to start with the center line. I always like to put my center lines first when I'm doing a revolve. So that way, if there is like a, a hole in the middle, like how there's going to be with, with this object, I know where I need to start. Since there's a hole, I'll go ahead and pause here for a second. Since there's a hole, I'm gonna revolve this around the center line. So if I start, my object away from my center line. There's going to be a gap here. Hopefully you can see that. Um, and it will definitely become a little more clear once we actually revolve it. This is, this is definitely a, a weirder shape. Um, so we have all the weird angles and then we have our little mushroom on top. I can't see what I'm doing, so we'll zoom in. Okay, there we go. There's our basic shape. Um, one thing I'd like to point out is notice how as I was sketching, all these relations got added in. So I made sure that when I was drawing horizontal lines, they're actually horizontal and vertical lines are actually vertical. And then one thing I also did, um, which if you didn't do this, it's okay. I'll show you how to fix it. While I was drawing um, this line, I'll go ahead and redo it just so you can maybe see it. This little yellow box pops up down there and it highlights the other line orange saying, oh, do you want these to be parallel? I'm like, yeah, I'd love for them to be parallel. So I can do that. If you miss that, you don't need to delete and redraw. You can just hold control, select both lines, maybe. There we go, select both lines, and then you would select parallel in your relations menu. This drawing, in my opinion, is a lot of relations. So because my actual object lines are not on my origin, I'm going to first take two points and just say you are vertically aligned. So that way it won't move this way at all. It will still be in line with my origin and SolidWorks will not yell at me about it. Um, some other things. The drawing can be a little funky to read sometimes. Um, sometimes things might look a certain way um, and most of the time you can just make an assumption based on those appearances. So for example, I know that these two lines are collinear and equal. So collinear is just saying that these will always be in line with each other. And then equal is going to make sure that this center point is right in the middle. Something else I know is that these two lines are also going to be collinear. So 
So those are just the first little relations I want to add in, and you can definitely add them in later. I like to add them in first, um, but that is just, just a personal thing, and sometimes I honestly forget to. So not a big deal when you do it, um, but it, it does make it a little easier, because otherwise you would have to dimension this line and this line, whereas with this you can just, by making them collinear, you can just dimension one of them. So if we start with our dimensioning, so we're given diameters. Since this is a revolve, these do form circles, I guess you could say. Um, so I'm going to select my first line and my center line. If I'm on this side of my center line, the side where my object line has been selected, this is a radius. But if I move my mouse across to the other side, it gives me a diameter. So because I'm given all of these dimensions as a diameter, I'm going to have, I'm going to go ahead and just put them as a diameter because I don't want to have to do the math to figure out what all of these would be as radians. It's not like it's difficult math. I just don't want to do it. Um, this drawing does a fairly good job of kind of highlighting the points where it's dimensioning to. So hopefully that decreases any confusion. Uh, one thing with relations, sometimes they get in the way. Um, so you just kind of got to work around them Hope for the best. Notice how this got all wonky. That's okay. That's allowed to happen. So first, I'm just going to try and drag it up, make it look not as terrible. Ooh, it's going to get worse before it gets better. Okay, there we go. That looks, looks a little better. Sorry, my head child is trying to escape my math. Okay, <laughs> continuing. We will now add in another diameter. There we go. This one's 20. All right, so we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. What else do we know? We know that this little mushroom top here has a radius of 1. We know that this distance, maybe, there we go, is 1. We know that this distance is also one. We know that this distance is one. And we know that this distance is, so in this case, um, it's whatever a value you're given. Um, but I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna make up an a value. We're gonna say that it's four. We'll go with four. Four seems fairly reasonable. Um, I'm still underdefined though. Um, so I can add in a dimension here. And um, that you are also one apart. And then I'm also given a an angle. So the angle goes to the center between the two points. I'm sorry, between the two lines here. So this one and this one, because these are all parallel, it's gonna end up being the same angle. So I can just choose a line and go from there. So now I have a fully defined steering wheel. It's beautiful. Um, so I'm just gonna go features, revolve boss face, and SolidWorks automatically selected my center line for me. If it didn't, I just go ahead and click on it. And then because I only have one closed shape, I don't have to use my selected contours box to select what I actually want to revolve. We do want to go 360 degrees. So I'll just go ahead and hit OK and check that out. We have this weird, almost steering wheel shape now. Um, we just have to add in our little cutouts. So as I said in the last video for the cutouts, I like to sketch on this face here. 
Um, hopefully it makes sense as to why um, once I cut these out. Okay. okay, so I'm sketching on this face here, but that does not mean I am constrained to this face. It's like sketching on a plane. It extends forever. Um, so I'm going to start with my center lines just because that will make it a lot easier to figure out where I want to go. For center lines, I don't care how long they are. I'm just using them for construction. It doesn't have anything to do with the definition of my drawing. So I'm told that this angle is 72 degrees, so I'm going to do that. And that's going to help me draw or sketch my, my arcs and my lines. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm just going to use a circle um, because I know where my center point is. I'll have to trim things away, but that's okay. I'm going to draw two circles. And then I'm going to go ahead and trim this away. So now I'm just dealing with this area. And then I will connect with some nice lines. And then I will do one more trim. So I can get the basic shape of my cut. So I know that this line has to be vertical because it's parallel with this one. And then this line and my center line are going to be parallel. Now I can add in some dimensions. So I know that this outside arc has a radius of 8.5. And this inside arc has a radius of four. I know that the distance between my center line and my other line is one on both sides. So I'll add those in. And I'm already almost done. Whoa. Um, now I just want to use my sketch fillet. So my outside fillets have a radius of 0.5. So I'll add those in by clicking the corners of whatever I want to fill it. And then my inside fillets have a radius of two. So I'm gonna add those in. And now I have my cutout. But while I'm on this face, I'm gonna go ahead and add in my little keyhole shape here. Um, just so it's one less step I have to do later. So because the keyhole is attached to this circle, I can use this circle as a, as a guide. I'm sorry, my voice is starting to die. As a guide for where the bottom of this cut needs to be. So I'm going to select my circle, hit convert entities, and now I have a circle that is the same diameter, same location, same everything as the hole in my studio. Now I can just use my line. Oh, it did the tangent. I don't want that. Let's try this again. There we go. Vertical, horizontal, and vertical back down. And I know I want it to be equal on both sides, so I'm going to select both lines in my center line and tell them, hey, I want you to be symmetric. So that will keep my distance equal on both sides. I'm going to smart dimension, maybe. I don't know why I selected the circle. Okay. Oh my gracious. SolidWorks, what are you doing? Okay, let's, let's try this again. Okay, we got our smart dimension, we're good to go. We're doing okay. So I know the distance of this line is going to be 0.6. And then I know from here to my center is going to be 1.6. Last thing I need to do is just trim 
the rest of that circle away. Okay, so now I have my keyhole, I have my cutout. One thing to note, so because I added my keyhole in this same sketch, I have to do a circular sketch pattern because if I were to do the feature circular pattern, it would also try to pattern my little keyhole cutout. So the next thing I'm going to do is use circular sketch pattern. My parameters I'm going to say are this circle. I want five of these cutouts. Oops equal spacing 360 degrees and my entities to pattern are going to be arc, fillet, line, fillet, arc, fillet, line, and fillet. And then I will click OK. And there we go. We did it. So now I can just go features, extruded cut, and I will say cut through everything. Okay, and there you go, we did it. We have a beautiful steering wheel. Um, the last thing that I would need to do is change my material. So I'll right click material, hit edit material, and then I will wait very patiently. That pulled up really quickly. I'm kind of impressed. So this is AISI 1020 steel. So I'll select that. I don't know why this menu is so incredibly large. Um, oh my gosh, how do I hit okay? Hello? <laughs> um, well, this hasn't happened before, so that's fun. Um, I don't really know what to do in this situation, honestly. Do I just keep squishing it down until I find it? Um, I'm going to try moving it to my other screen. I can't move it to my other screen. Um, okay, so pretend I applied this. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I can't do it. Um, let's try it. Yeah, no, it's still the same problem. This is really weird. Um, can I do it this way? No. Okay. Well, that's um, that's an interesting one. I have not run into this problem before, um, but I would hit apply down here and then close or just hit the X. This would say AISI 1020, and then I would be able to evaluate my mass, which is also incredibly small. Okay, that's all I have for you guys today. Um, yeah, if you are confused as to where these dimensions came from, please watch the previous video. It will explain them a little more. Um, or leave a comment, and I will try to explain there.